After making part two of the tube tester reminiscence, I realized that I had left one of the mutual conductance testers out of the uh, mix. This is a Syncor MU150. It's a unique tester in a couple of ways. One, it came along very late in the uh, uh, I think this was uh, first introduced as the MU-140 in 1969. And it was sort of, uh, a lot of people called this the Cadillac of Syncor testers because it was considered to be one of the best uh, testers of the day. It was exclusively uh, limited to radio and TV tubes, especially TV tubes. So as a result, uh, like many of the testers made after about uh, 1965 or so, there were no 4-pin, 5-pin, 6-pin uh, tubes at all. The uh, I'm not even sure if this one will test a loctal. I don't see a loctal socket. The uh, it, it may, but uh, I'll look for that in just a second. But it basically tests octal, 7, and 9-pin miniature, and then the later tubes like uh, what was called a Novar, a Compactron, a, a, a Decal. Uh, there were uh, a, a raft of tubes that were introduced in the late 60s in an attempt to hold off transistors. But uh, the second unique thing about this tester is it's the only tester I know of that allows you to test both emission and mutual conductance. Now, when I say that, what I mean is a lot of testers will test a tube for emission and another tube for mutual conductance, like the BNK700 or the 707. This tester, however, allows you to test every tube for emission and every tube for mutual conductance, although understand that tubes without control grids trying to measure mutual conductance is, is ridiculous because there's no uh, pin to apply a signal to. But nonetheless, this is the, uh, the, the tube tester. Now, let me take a look in the, uh, in the manual and see if it will test an octal tube. I meant to say loctal tube. The loctal tubes generally had, uh, for example, a 6-volt loctal tube would have a 7 as its first digit instead of a 6 to designate that it was a loctal. And indeed, this tester will test loctal tubes. Uh, the ones here at the top, for example, are loctals. And it uses socket 19, which is uh, right here. So it does have a loctal socket. Before I finish this uh, addendum, I did want to show you that the, uh, the setting that normally you use for testing the quality of a tube on this tester is labeled GM hyphen emission. And then down here there is a GM test button that you press. The setup, that is the uh, the way that you adjust all of the uh, controls is different for a, uh, an emissions test and for a, a GM test. Uh, let me uh, get the book out and show you that. One of the tubes that I was uh, testing on this a little bit ago was a 6AU6. Let me show you how you set up that tube for both emissions as well as uh, for mutual conductance. Here you see the listing for the 6AU6. And you may notice, and I'll zoom out in just a second, there is a column here that is uh, has a darker background. The, uh, the socket and the voltage this is the voltage for the filament. This is the socket. Remains the same. But if you use the dark column, you this is the setup to do emissions on a 6AU6. 
And then to the right is are the uh, columns for setting up to do mutual conductance. Now, up at the top, you will see that it has the, the uh, tube type on the left, then the filament and socket, and then here it says emission, whereas over here it says mutual conduct or mu mutual uh, uh, conductance. As I say, this is the only tester I know that lets you do either emission or mutual conductance for any tube for which you can do mutual conductance. The last thing I'll mention about this tester is it it has a reputation for being very good at testing power tubes. Earlier I showed you in the emissions part one emissions testers a uh, Sencor tester. I was showing you the hybrider which is actually called the TC28. It's exactly the same circuit as the TC162. So if you are looking for one without the transistor test functions, uh, a TC28 and a TC162 are identical and I think I may have even used those numbers interchangeably uh, in that uh, part one. At any rate, uh, this tester repeated some of the good features of that uh, tester, that is the the uh, one of the TC28, uh, TC162, and so on, in that it tests power tubes at their full rated current. Many testers do not do that. The nice thing about that is for output tubes, uh, now it does this in the emission position, but that's really the only place you need to test them for output because the limit is the cathode. So if the cathode will emit enough electrons for the tube to operate at its full rated current, and then you test that same tube for mutual conductance and find that it's within spec, you have pretty much verified that that tube uh, tests as good as you can do it on a tube tester. Once again, I reiterate, don't always trust tube testers, or maybe I should say this. Tube testers can certainly help you find bad tubes. They can also help you separate bad tubes from probably good tubes, but remember the word probably. They won't actually uh, guarantee that this tube will work in your circuit, even if it passes all the tests. The last thing about this tester is it had a very good grid emission and uh, gas, if you will, test. You see that last test on the right there is for uh, grid leakage, which is basically a test for whether there is any grid current flowing when there shouldn't be. Once again, this tester did a very good job of it. However, it does have limitations for people like me who like to work on old radios. As a result, the, the fact that this, two, this tester requires you to still set everything up, like uh, some of the other testers, causes me to, to basically use my B&K 650 with the 610 test panel as my primary tester. Partly because I don't have to worry about setting up a lot of stuff unless I use the 610 panel. If I can find the tube on the basic uh, B and K panel, then I know I'm not, I don't have it set up wrong. Uh, when I need something else, I tend to go to the uh, Hickok 600A, as I point out, and the reason I go to that rather than this Sencor is very simply that those are usually cases where I'm trying to test old tubes, like four or five uh, six pin tubes, and this tester won't do that. Otherwise, this tester is fine if you're not going to be testing real old tubes. There also, as I said, is an earlier version of this called the MU140 that is almost identical to this. In fact, I can't see much difference. And there is a nice manual on the Bama Manuals website for that MU140. So uh, I 
forgot about this tester when I got out the uh, mutual conductance testers earlier. I thought it would be good to add it back in because it is an important uh, addition to uh, the, the tube tester uh, genre, particularly for the very late period of television servicing. Uh, as I say, this was introduced in 69. And by that time, many of the tubes that were being used, if not all of them, were these high-density compactrons. And this tester did a real good job on those. So anyway, once again, I, uh, I apologize. I had this back in the back of the attic, and I just didn't uh, remember to go get it. But uh, now that I've done it, I'll probably put it back up there, uh, at least for a while. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you'll stay tuned for some other uh, videos on some other subjects.